So happy to welcome to the Kelly Alexander Show, Ms. Alessia Cara. Hi. I have to tell you, you're going to think I'm a weirdo, but I'm such a fan of here. Like, I honestly am in love with that song. All my colleagues at the radio station know that when your song comes on, I lose my mind. Thank you. So <laughs> did you have a feeling when you wrote the song that it was going to go somewhere? Like, did you? Because sometimes I w always want to know from an artist if they have a gut feeling like, mm, it's going to go. I, I definitely did. Okay. I, I didn't know to what extent and I didn't know what was going to happen, but I, I definitely just in my gut knew that it was something. And I remember I went home the same day that we wrote it and showed it to my mom. And I was like, Mom, this song is, this is the song that's going to just, you know, help me out and it's going to, you know, get out there. And she she didn't even like it at first. She was like, all right, yeah, yeah. Because it was a really <laughs> bad demo. And I was like, no, just wait. It has to be produced and I have to re-record it. But trust me. And I just knew, but I didn't know that people would turn it into what, what it turned into mm -hmm. for sure you can't ever expect that or prepare yourself for that and with the song because like when you listen it, it just sounds like it's this cool vibe track but then you listen and you're like hating on this party which is so amazing <laughs> right because i think everyone thinks parties have to be amazing and you're like no it's not uh <laughs> did you know that people were gonna really take from that because i think it's almost like in a way you're like the anti-pop star with that song but it's amazing yeah, it's so strange to, to think that. I feel like, you know, the second I came out, people just put me there. And it's strange because I never even thought of it that way. I just mm -hmm. thought, well, you know, I went to this lame party that I didn't enjoy <laughs> and put it out. And it's crazy to me because now people have made me the voice for introverts or the voice for this anti-pop generation. But it's strange because it's it's a pop song and mm -hmm. it's getting played on pop radio. So mm -hmm. it's strange. And I'm, I don't think I'm anti-pop at all or mm -hmm. anti party even but I, I just really wanted to make a point and say that not everybody enjoys these things you know now when I listen to you you have such a like an old soul voice which is amazing because you definitely sound older than your 19 years um, who has influenced you musically growing up um, definitely Amy Winehouse she's okay. like the biggest influence for me um, just vocally musically everything uh, she's so unapologetic and, and raw and I loved when her, like when she would make her recordings and she would record, like it was not overly auto-tuned or melodyned at all. Like sometimes she would be a little flat, but it would sound so beautiful mm -hmm. because it was raw. And I love that. And I, I just love um, doing that with my music too. I never like to auto-tune stuff. And if something's off, it just sounds cooler to me. Now, which celebrity or artist, I want to say artist, I want to say celebrity, which artist, whether they're sort of hot now or even someone from the past, would you love to go out for dinner with to pick their brain? Oh my goodness. Probably either Drake or Ed Sheeran. Nice. I'm just so fascinated by them and their and their writing style. I just want to ask them like a thousand questions about writing. Even Taylor Swift would be really cool for writing. Mm -hmm. Just to ask her like her process and just what they think about the world. I'd ask them anything. I think they're so fascinating to me. What's the coolest celebrity tweet you've gotten where someone's like, I dig your stuff? Uh oh my gosh. I think when I got tweeted by Lord, that was incredible. Lord tweeted you? She did. Really That's early amazing. on, too. She caught on to here very early on. And I'm such a fan of hers. I think she's awesome. Just as a teen girl doing what, you know, doing what it, I've always wanted mm -hmm. to do and just speaking for, for us regular teen girls that yeah. are just, you know, just are tired of things sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, I, I just... I was it was incredible that she said it she said like look I'm, I'm loving here and she called me angel girl and I was like angel girl yeah, that's <laughs> awesome I love you yeah it was so cool to have that you know mutual respect for each other mm -hmm. it's really cool talk to us about what it felt like when you walked out on stage with Taylor Swift at her concert first of all how did you get asked to do it and then what did it feel like with I think it was something like 55,000 fans it yeah, was crazy. 55,000 people. It was in incredible. Um, well, how it started was I was looking for someone to interview me for my album. Okay. Um, and then I, I just had this crazy idea with my manager to, to um, ask Taylor Swift. So I told him, I'm like, should I ask Taylor Swift? And he's like, all right, like do whatever you want to do. <laughs> so he's, he's like, just do it, you know, just go for it. So he convinced me to, to just go for it. I went for it. I asked her over Twitter. I DM'd her. I wrote her like this long paragraph of what my album is and hi. And, you know, if, if, would you like to interview me? Because I just thought she'd be really a cool like a That's great interviewer amazing. and not only did she say yes like right away she said you know and by the way do you want to come on stage with me and sing here and i was like what is going on it was such a crazy experience i just remember screaming in the middle of a sushi restaurant i'm so proud of you i know that sounds ridiculous but i'm so proud of you this canadian kid from brampton like doing it up with taylor swift because you were Thank one of the you. select few that got to be basically her celeb guest list at all these concerts you know she had ellen jt like I think the weekend showed up at one of our concerts. Like, yeah. what does it know? Like, feel like to know? Like, you were in this list of like all these other people. It's so weird to me. It's so crazy to think about. You know that I'm now a peer of one of these people. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. but I'm I'm such a fan of theirs, and it. You know, just recently I was still just a music fan and nothing else. And mm -hmm. I'm still a music fan, but now I'm just considered a peer and an artist just like them. And that's so crazy. And it, it's amazing that she would even recognize that um, so early on in my career and say, well, you belong here and, and we, we want you here. And that was awesome of her too to do. How much do you want to go to the Grammys? Are you going to go? 
Are you going to Grammy? Uh, I don't think I'm going this year. Okay. But um, I've always, that's like, of course, the dream for every artist. Mm -hmm. So hopefully next year. Two questions that are sort of based in one. Uh, which American artist would you love to collaborate with and which Canadian artist would you love to collaborate with? <gasps> okay. American artist. Oh, that's really hard. What American artist is really cool? Uh, hmm, that's hard. American, who would be a really cool American artist to collaborate with? Because I feel they'd be lucky to work with you. I do. Oh, I so do. I really do. You. No, I really do. I think because you're so fresh and new and, like I said, this old soul. So I think they'd be lucky to work with you. Thank like, you so much. Um, I, I love, like, a lot of rappers. Like, J. Cole would be awesome. Oh, my God. I could totally see Big with Sean him. Sean would be incredible, too. Okay. Um, Kendrick Lamar, Chance. All these, all these rappers, hip-hop artists would be amazing. Um, and then Canadian artists... Um, Drake, of course. Mm -hmm. The weekend would be awesome. Yeah. Bieber would be really cool too. Have you met him yet? I've met. Uh, yeah, I have, I've met everyone except for uh, the weekend. Okay, but I've met all the the the, Cana the big Canadian artists right now. Which That's is so cool. cool. Yeah. Before I let you go, what do you want to say to? the 17, 18, 19 year old Canadian kid that's maybe living in Saskatoon right now, maybe, <laughs> you know, here in Montreal, what do you want to say to them if they want to be like the next Alessia Cara? Um, that you can, you know, I think that's the main thing is you always think if you're from a, like a small little town, no one, you know, it's so hard to get out there and no one can ever find you, but that's yeah. not true. I think now with the resources that we have, like YouTube and just social media, it's so much easier to get out there and it's honestly possible for, for anybody in, in it and everybody now talk to us about uh the album know it all what do you mean by that do you mean that you know it all or you need to know it all um i think it's a bit of both in a sarcastic sense um i think you know when you're a teenager um you like to think that you know everything it's true uh, you know you're, you're just being a know-it-all and i think all these songs have such a strong opinion and a strong message that it's like it's basically me saying you know like trust me on this like this is how life works i'm a teenager i know everything um but in reality i, I really don't know anything at all of course mm -hmm. and i'm still learning and it actually that that title came from a line in my song called 17 mm -hmm. the first song on the album that says i'm a know-it-all i don't know enough and so that line, I think, just represents the whole album um, and just what I was basically trying to say is that I don't really know much, but here is what I think I know as a 19-year-old. That's awesome. Now, when you uh, were a kid, I read that you were into poetry. Yeah. So how much has that played a part in how you write your lyrics now? Um, I think it plays a huge part because of just the style of, of, you know, spoken word. I was really into spoken word and also short stories. So mm -hmm. fitting rhymes and, and fitting a certain amount of words in like a certain space is kind of what songs are like, right? Mm -hmm. So um, I think especially with here and my song Four Pink Walls as well, there's kind of like a sing rappy type of vibe. Yep. And I'm just rhyming like a lot of words together. And I think that kind of plays off of the spoken word um, influence. What has it been like being a Canadian kid now doing extremely well in the States? Um, it's awesome. It really is. It's so cool to not only be from Canada, but to be from Brampton, Ontario, like mm -hmm. a place that barely anyone's ever heard of. <laughs> um, and, you know, and come out and, and just, you know, be successful at, at music. You know, you don't really mm -hmm. see that a lot. And I'm so lucky to be one of those those people and to show people from Brampton that it is possible to get out and mm -hmm. do what you love. Now, have you found that um, when you're in the States, like it's it's different for you with regards to how Canadian fans are? Like, is there a difference? Um, I think so. Yeah, I think there's. I think American fans are a lot more. I mean, Canadian fans are a lot more chill. I, I yeah. find. Mm -hmm. Yeah, American fans are very hyped up. They kind of they know where you're going to be at the airports. Like they're really, really dedicated in that sense. But Canadians are more dedicated. You know, to the, to the, the whole idea of like coming to your show and just you know supporting the music in a different way. Mm -hmm. It's kind of it's hard to explain. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, definitely more chill. The Canadians for sure. Are you ready for this? Because I feel like you are going places. And I know it's been a couple of years that you've been working on the album and all that kind of stuff. But so people might say, oh, she's an overnight success, which we know you're not. But like, are you ready for the tra trajectory that you're probably on and going to go kaboom? Like, are you do you think you're ready or you're just going to try to stay in your bubble and day by day? Um, I guess, yeah, I guess there's no really way of knowing if I'm ready until it happens. So mm -hmm. I'm trying to just be in my bubble and keep a tight circle around me and just really take it day by day because, um, you know, fame and all that kind of stuff kind of scares me in a weird sense. I, I never really looked for that. I just want to make mm -hmm. music, and obviously that comes with it. So I don't know how it's going to go. I don't know how far this is going to get. Mm -hmm. But um, I'm just hoping it. You know, I, I stay the same and I can still continue to make the same music. I'm so proud of you. Keep doing what you're doing. Thank you. And keep your head above water and be the best Canadian you can be because I know you're going to make us so proud. Ah, thank you so much. Alessia Cara right here on The Kelly Alexander Show. Hey, it's Alessia Cara, and you're listening to The Kelly Alexander Show. 
Thank you so much for taking the time to watch the video. We've got a lot more great content coming your way. So make sure to subscribe right here and check out all that's coming up on The Kelly Alexander Show.